Oh, fantastic. It's going. It's working. This is Catania Alvin from London saying good morning to my subscribers. Thank you so much for your comments. I read a few the other day. I just seen up to my ears and I took half a day off yesterday and went off for a walk in on the heath and it was so blowy I nearly did a Mary Poppins and got whipped up off the ground. Anyway, it w it was uh, lovely to tramp across the heath with a good friend. Now, this is a, a Brexit <laughs> video, guess what? And I'm starting with Nigel Farage as he lays out the facts of the case. So let's start with that. We have in place right now, right now in existence is the EU Withdrawal Act. The EU Withdrawal Act. It's an act. It's been passed in Parliament. That needs to be remembered. It is an act of Parliament. It comes as a direct consequence of 498 MPs voting for Article 50. Okay, 498 MPs voting for Article 50. And, and, and so Article 50, Nick, says that we leave two years after we trigger yes, it, it with a withdrawal agreement or without a withdrawal agreement and whatever parliament says or does or whatever games speaker burko gets up to the fact is the only people that can willfully change that piece of legislation are the government themselves so there is a way through this and that is that is that theresa may puts her deal forward it gets voted down again and she then says we're sticking with the legislation and we're leaving so there is a way it could be done nick absolutely now I'd like to take you to Bill Cash, or Sir William Cash, speaking at the Oxford Union, and that is on May the 31st, 2013, or that was the date when the Oxford Union put this debate at Oxford Union up. Ladies and gentlemen, We've had a very interesting debate. Uh, we have heard much from Chris Bryant, former Minister for Europe, advocates of the European Union, John Pete, European editor, The Economist, very knowledgeable people. We've heard many speeches from the floor. But the one thing I would ask you to do is to beware what you wish for when you vote tonight. And I say that for a very simple reason. There are many arguments on both sides of the equation. I'm not going to dispute that. But one thing is for sure, and that is that Europe is on the cusp. Now, what is he talking about? Europe is on the cusp. I'll go back in a moment. And here I have... Um, this which is interesting, EU Exodus and uh, The Great Awakening, part one, and this um, gentleman's done part two as well. The end of the European Union, the no Brexit deal, the start sign of RV, revaluation implementation, knowledge is power. Okay, now any of those of you who have seen The Restored Republic, information I've shared in some videos will know that the RV stands for revaluation. In other words, we're going back onto the global stand. So here where he's talking about the EU has grown into a malignant economic cancer. Will the fall of the EU be the biggest event in modern day financial history? Most likely yes. When the Brexit domino does fall, it will unleash a series of unstoppable events that will culminate in the fall of the EU. Now, why is this? I'm going to go back to... Right, here's Bill Cash again. If you look at what is going on in Italy today, if you look at the fact as I address a young audience and I ask myself the question would you want if you were living in Spain or in Greece 
to have unemployment levels of 53% as your future? Now, this is fi now we're five years on. Look at what is happening in Italy now. Look what's happening in Poland. I mean, look right across the board and look and look at what's happening in France and look at which countries are really becoming more and more conservative thinking or right thinking, right in, in, in the correct way of thinking or otherwise, <laughs> to the right. And there is so much upheaval in Europe five years on from this talk. You were to ask yourself the question, what is the reason for this? It isn't Europe. I'm passionately in favour of Europe. Yes, what is the reason for this? I voted, as John Pete said, to stay in the European arrangements of the time in 1975. My own father was killed in the war in 1944, fighting for the very freedom that Chris Bryant was referring to. But it was a freedom of democracy. It was a freedom of the right to choose. It was a freedom that they fought for of democracy. It was a freedom of the right to choose. My own father-in-law, my husband's father, of course, Noel Newsom, started the World Service, the BBC service, and he was known as the man in the street. Many years after that, he, uh, when he came, he would talk about Europe, and he was passionate about Europe, but based on democracy, not communism set up with whereby everyone's ruled by eight unelected officials. It was a freedom against the totalitarianism. It was a freedom against the centralization. It was a freedom for the right to be able to decide in the ballot box which laws governed you. We've heard much sophistry from the other side, but the reality is it does not work. Right. Now I'm going to take you to a five-year-older Bill Cash, or Sir William Cash, and here we're in the Parliament Live TV, and this is part of the Parliamentarian Scrutiny Committee on the 30th of January when Steve Baker was giving his evidence, if you like. Uh, very interesting for us to get a sense of what, what was really going on in your mind. Thank you, Sir William, and I very much appreciate this opportunity to give evidence. I'm grateful to the whole committee. Um, you, of course, come to the heart of the matter, in particular in your connection to the passage of the EU Withdrawal Act, for which I was responsible in the Commons, and the, uh, my resignation not far after. Um, so obviously David Davis and I were very close to one another and uh, it, it became apparent to me in the preceding week that the government was going to adopt, adopt a policy for EU exit that I would not be able to support. The right, so now let's go, bringing this over, on a, a, a previous video I did where Sir William <laughs> talks about Article 4. So this is, if you do a search for um, Article 4, you'll see the Institute for Government, which is the IFG, Insight, and this was written December 2018, and I'm in the, I, I couldn't print it out directly, so I'm putting it across to a, my docs and taking forever, but it's very, very interesting. And here, I've actually got this bit printed out, so the Prime Minister is hoping to secure the support of Parliament for her withdrawal agreement in the coming weeks. If she succeeds winning the meaningful vote, which is obviously her words, and that's in quotes, on her deal, interestingly enough, that's not in quotes, that will only mark the start of a contentious process to implement the deal in legislation. Parliament will be under pressure to legislate quickly, but it will have to confront issues of major and long-term constitutional significance. This IFG Insight paper focuses on one particularly difficult question, colon, 
how to reconcile the commitments of the withdrawal agreement with the sovereignty of Parliament. So the withdrawal agreement with the government has negotiated with the EU covers citizens' rights, the financial settlement between the UK and the EU, the standstill transition period after exit days and various other technical separation provisions. It also contains a protocol on Ireland and Northern Ireland known as the backstop. A set of laws that will come into force at the end of the transition period in order to keep the Irish border infrastructure free. If the UK and the EU have not negotiated a trade deal to do that job by then, um, if the government wins a vote approving agreement, either as its first or a later attempt, it will argue that Parliament has accepted the withdrawal agreement in principle and so has no option but to support the statute that puts it into UK law. Many provisions of the bill, however, will be contentious. One part of the legislation in particular raises a significant constitutional issue which could have ramifications well beyond the implementation of the withdrawal agreement. How the UK makes good its commitment to entrench elements in the agreement in UK law and protect them from the decisions of future parliaments. That is the subject of the paper. Right, continue. Um, heading, Article 4 of the Withdrawal Agreement tries to reintroduce EU law concepts into the UK. If the government gets Parliament's approval for the deal in principle, it will bring forward the EU Withdrawal Agreement Bill to give effect to that treaty in UK law. The bill will need to give effect, among other things, to Article 4 of the Withdrawal Agreement. The first two paragraphs of this article read as follows. 1. The provisions of this agreement and the provisions of Union law made applicable by this agreement shall produce in respect of and in the United Kingdom the same legal effects as those which they produce within the Union and its member states. Accordingly, legal or natural persons shall in particular be able to rely directly on the provisions contained or referred to in this agreement which meet the conditions for direct effect under Union law. 2. The United Kingdom shall ensure compliance with paragraph 1, including as regards the required powers of its judicial and administrative authorities to display inconsistent or incompatible domestic provisions through the domestic primary legislation. This is an attempt to imbue the withdrawal agreement and any EU rules made applicable by the withdrawal agreement with two fundamental features of EU law. First, much EU law has, in quotes, direct effect. This means that individuals and private parties can enforce their rights under this law before domestic or meaning British courts. Second, EU law has supremacy over national law. Second, EU law has supremacy over national law. This means that where there is a conflict between a rule of EU law and a rule of national law, the rule of EU law prevails. National courts and national public authorities are therefore under the obligation to apply the rule of EU law and disapply the rule of national law. So now we need to look at what the European Union is. It is not a democracy. 
is Katanya Alvin signing out.